And um, Dani, of course, helped also me a lot when I was a new one, like a hobby athlete at the first time. And um, I'm I'm doing four years. I decided um, if my health is, is fine with that, but then it's it's fine. Like then it's done. Hi, Eva. It's nice to talk with you. Uh, how is your health and what stage of preparations to, to the new season are you at? Uh, my health is very well and that's the most important thing. Uh, also mental health is on a good level at the moment. Um, body gets in shape. Um, yeah, and um, athletic training is going well, uh, building strength and uh, yeah, trying to get fast. Uh -huh. And uh, starting with jumping tomorrow, and uh -huh. yeah, really looking forward to it. What place? In Chaguns, it's my home hill, uh -huh. and uh, I jump often or as often as I can with the kids here from the club and from the part of Austria where I live. And yeah, it's 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 always a fun time, and I'm really looking forward for the first jumps. Uh, it's easy to get the impression that you are the smiliest ski jumper among the World Cup <laughs> ladies. Uh, is it ski jumping that gives you so much joy or is it just your personality? Um, it's both, I guess. It's uh, Ski jumping itself is just a fun sport. And uh, well, like 10, year, like 10 years ago, sitting here having an interview and already jumped very well on, on a high level. Mm -hmm. uh, if you tell me this 10 years ago, I would say, yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, I'm enjoying life. I'm enjoying the opportunities I get through ski jumping. And, I mean, the feeling itself, if you do a good jump, it's just the best feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. According to many sources, you jumped on skis for the first time at the age of 24. However, uh, a results database by, by Adam Kwiecinski includes information about uh, you taking part in a few competitions in Germany and Austria in 1998 and 1999. Which version is true? Um, I tried it as a kid. Like I did a lot of sports. Like I was a kid who could never sit still. So I did a lot of ski racing. I climbed, um, I tried soccer or I, I played mm -hmm. soccer and I also tried ski jumping. And um, yeah, I, I tried it exactly in these years when I was 10 and 11. Um, but then, um, yeah, I was a competitive kid and, kid and I liked to compete. Um, my dad worked pretty hard to, um, yeah, get enough money that I could go to a boarding school for alpine racing. So I did that at the age of 11 and then uh, no time, unfortunately, for ski jumping anymore. Uh, still, you've started your ski jumping career uh, relatively late. Uh, what were you into before then? Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, as a kid, I did a lot of sports. Um, as I already mentioned, like ski racing, I tried ski jumping, I did soccer, um, I did climbing. Um, then I stick with ski racing. That was just a sport I, I really loved and I enjoyed. And um, then, yeah, <laughs> I quit ski racing. Um, because of several reasons, I was just not good enough and um, yeah, started to um, study and worked here um, at my hometown. And uh, yeah, I did a lot again, soccer, running, like just all, all out, all kind of out outdoor sports. And when I was 24, I got the opportunity to to do ski jumping again and um, yeah, to fulfill this childhood dream of jumping 100 meter on skis and um, luckily it, it went out pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it possible that you were able to make such impressive progress uh, in the sport uh, in such a quick time and uh, that uh, you're, uh, you are successful in this prestigious, prestigious events? Um, I think there are many or like more reasons. Maybe it's because I learned a little bit of the technique when I was younger, like, um, uh, yeah, and I have no fear or I had no fear. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm a good skier, so that also helped. And I mean, I was not a, a couch potato. I was fit and healthy in some parts, like example, running. 
I was uh, way faster than I am now because now I don't have that much time to go for a run like a 5k or a 10k I'm a lot slower now but that's fine because it's not it's not my job anymore so um yeah it's just um a lot of work then and um, I started at the right time like I had a great time at the club and um, the right person saw me jumping as a hobby athlete like Andy Felder and then he gave me the chance so um, in every career there is a, a big big part of luck and yeah the rest is hard work and um, yeah uh, a little bit yeah believe in yourself and talent I, I believe yeah of course <laughs> Uh, when you look at uh, your achievements so far, which one uh, are you most proud of? Hmm. Uh, I mean, the, the, yeah, the two silver medals at home world championships um, mm. with the team. That was just insane. And also um, the third place overall in the World Cup um season uh, 1920 that was that, yeah never thought i could uh, be on the podium on an, of of an overall ranking um so i yeah these are the biggest achievements i'd say mm -hmm. for someone following you on social media uh, it's easy to notice that uh, faith plays an important role in your life uh, does this uh, aspect uh, give you more strength in your uh, sport career um, I think it helps to define your value as a human. Like um, I, my value is the same if I win or if I'm not making the second round. Um, my value as a human um, is defined with other things than just like, or it's not measured by victories. It's it's measured in different things, and also faith helps to see like the bigger picture. Like I know. Um, God has my life in his hands. I cannot fall deeper than in his hands. And he has a plan for my life, although I do not understand a lot of things that happen. And yeah, I get angry and sad um, about <laughs> things that happen. I I trust that everything happens um, for the best. So um, that helps definitely. Yeah, uh, it's obvious that many other female ski jumpers uh, view you as a kind of soul and a very positive person. Uh, who are the closest friend uh, on ski jumping for you? And it's easy to form a friendship in ski jumping uh, in a rivalry. I mean, rivalry is just the 30 seconds we are on the, on the hill. The other um, 23 hours and a few minutes, <laughs> uh, you spend time together. And of course, there is time to build friendships. Um, one of my closest or the two closest friends already quit um, Sarah Hendrickson a few years ago and now fortunately uh -huh. um, Stella Rogel I was also very close with Elena Lungaldi and I still am and um, yeah the closest friend of my team is Chiara Hölzl uh, or no Kreuzer oh, I no? still get yeah. that <laughs> yeah the Kreuzer of course um, we, we can, we can cu cut it <laughs> <laughs> it's fine i'm not the only one and a lot of people are still getting it uh, yeah. wrong sometimes especially if you like have to think in english and stuff but yeah, yeah of course kiara and i um yeah we're having a good time and building a friendship but also um with maren or katarina altas there are a lot of women that are just fun and inspiring to be around and i really enjoy spending time with them Mm -hmm. Do you know so uh, some uh, ladies ski jumpers from Poland? Uh, yeah, Camilla, I know. Uh, I'm not sure if I say her her uh -huh. um, name right. And um, always fun if the team is around. Um, yeah, we try to speak in English. It's not that easy. Then of course it is in, with German jumpers. Um, but it's a it's a really fun team and big potential. Like if they. Keep their head up and um, yeah, believe in themselves. Uh, they have uh, good things coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, your fall in Zeffeld in 2020 uh, has probably been the most difficult moment in your career. Uh, is it painful memory for you? How bad uh, that injury was? Um, yeah, I mean the injury was um, 
yeah, it was bad. Uh, it was also close. Like I had over one liter of blood already in my stomach. My spleen uh, was ripped. And luckily it happened in, in Seefeld because Innsbruck is close and uh, it's one of the best um, yeah, hospitals you can get a surgery. So uh, I'm lucky yeah, that it happened where it happened. And there were very amazing doctors who did an, an unbelievable job. So it healed pretty fast, but still um, like the scars, I have scars uh, on my stomach. So um, of course we need that part. Um, we need the six pack to, yeah. um, <laughs> to flex, to be stable in the air. So there is still a little bit of um, recovery work to do and also on the mental part, but um, yeah, I take it day by day um, so far. The last comeback season was a roller coaster season. It was a lot of ups, but also downs. Um, and yeah, I'm just looking, really looking forward to have work hard on it this summer and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. You are one of the most experienced female uh, ski jumpers in the game. Do you look ahead uh, to athletes like Daniela Irashko Stoltz or even Noriaki Kasai when you think about your future? Um, yeah, well, I mean, these two are incredible. Like, they are both legends. It's it's unbelievable what they achieved. And both of them have a, a very nice um, jumping style. I love watching them. And um, Dani, of course, helped also me a lot when I was a new one, like a hobby athlete at the first time. And um, I'm, I'm doing four years. I decided um, if my health is, is fine with that. But then it's it's fine, like then it's done. So the goal is um, to qualify for Cortina 2026. 20, and um, of course, everything in between. There are a lot of highlights coming up. Yeah, but then I'm I'm done because um, I like to do things 100%. So now I'm 100% athlete. And um, yeah, later, of course, I want a family. So as a female athlete, it's, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I understand. The major star uh, in Austrian team is now Marita Kramer. Do you think she's capable uh, of dominating women's ski jumping like Sara Takanashi or Maren Lundby? Yes, she definitely is. I mean, there's always the part of luck not to get injured, uh, but she's working hard. She's very talented and uh, she's definitely the one to beat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the ladies will finally be able to take the leap and uh, test their strengths in ski flying. Uh, are you among those that can barely wait until that happens? Or uh, are you a bit anxious when you think about ski flying hills? Uh, it's both. It's uh, I'm really, really, uh, yeah, happy. And uh, I was, yeah, really uh, it was a joyful day when they decided that the top 15 are allowed. But till the like, I'm I'm a little bit happy now. I'm gonna be really happy if the first woman is in track is going off the the takeoff. Then it's like boom. Then it's gonna explode, and and we're like, yes, we did it. Woman can ski fly. Um, I have to work hard and see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm working mentally. I'm working on my jumping. Working on my athletics. And of course, I mean, flying 200 meters would be absolutely insane. Uh, as we remember uh, that Daniela Irashko Stoltz uh, is the uh, ladies' uh, world record holder. Uh, do you think uh, that the Vickerson Bakken uh, will be the best place to, to take these competitions in 2023? Yeah, I think so. It's, I mean, it's an extreme sport. But Vickers and Bakken seems um, the safest, if you can consider that, for a, for a yeah, ski flying hill. Um, so I think hopefully the weather will be good. And um, yeah, less wind or no wind. And uh -huh. yeah, it will be great. Uh -huh. What are your plans for the next few weekends and uh, for the summer season? Can we see you in Viswa? I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, it's the plan to start in Vizsla. Um We'll see. Uh, I take it day by day, week by week. Um, yeah, starting with jumping tomorrow and then see if I'm ready in Vizsla. would be nice. I really enjoyed it last year. It was 
two great competitions. And what do you think about uh, the competitions uh, which will be held in Wisla uh, at the beginning of the winter season on the plastic mat? Going to be interesting. Um, it's it's an early start, and uh, I mean in training uh, or also for the Austrian Championships, we already jumped with yeah. ice track and landing on plastic. Um, yeah, I mean for us, for the women, it's it's great that um, they invest the money they need for artificial snow into women um, competition. So for us, it's great to have to have another competition. It's an early start, and it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be interesting who is already in shape um, and yeah, can be can be really interesting and, and fun competition. Yeah. OK, thank you very much, Eva, for for this uh, interview. It was really nice to talk with you and uh, wish you all the best for, for the next year's and uh, Olympic uh, time. Thanks. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for the invitation. Great. Thank you. Bye.